Baker. It's an eventful day in college sports. The states of Tennessee and Virginia, they've been granted their injunction from the Eastern District of Tennessee against the NCAA and the implications, well, they're going to span out for uh, a lot of people involved. And we are lucky enough right now to be joined by the attorney generals of both the states of Tennessee and Virginia, AG of Tennessee, Jonathan Skirmetti, and Jason Miarez, AG of Virginia, on with us right now on Hot Mike. Gentlemen, uh, first off, congratulations on this ruling today. I know a lot of hard work has gone into this. Thank you for taking the time to, to join us. And uh, Attorney General Skirmetti, I, I'll start with you on this because you have joined our show before and you had mentioned you're fighting on behalf of student athletes and prospective student athletes in Tennessee. So what does this ruling today, what does this mean for those student athletes and prospective student athletes in the state of Tennessee? This means student athletes can get the best deal out there on NIL. Uh, they're able to talk to collectives before they make a decision. They're able to see what their opportunities are, what their options are, and make an informed choice. And nobody has to... Rules are clear. The rules are if they want to talk to a collective, they can talk to a collective. And Attorney General Miarez, um, in the beginning, I think everyone knew, okay, they could see the path and the line as to why Tennessee was getting involved in this. But uh, someone had the question, why Virginia all, also involved in this? What, what drew the state of Virginia into this lawsuit, into this fight on behalf of student athletes? Well, I mean, we have several uh, college athletic programs, obviously in Virginia, but really what this has been is something that's been on my mind back when I was a state legislature. I actually put in legislation to help create what we now know as NIL before it was very well known. And the reality is the NCAA for years, for decades, in my opinion, have been exploiting these student athletes. They signed an $8.8 .8 billion television contract with CBS Sports for just the men's basketball tournament. Students don't seem a dime of that. And whether it is a a basketball or football stadium or arena that's built in, in Tallahassee or built in Athens or Tuscaloosa, uh, Nate Chapel Hill, the reality is so many student athletes put their blood, sweat, and tears into these programs. And for decades upon decades, they never received a dime. And so, you know, my attitude has always been let these students, if I was a computer science major in college and IBM wanted to reward me for my talents while I was still a student, Everybody else would say, that's great. That's the American way. It's a freedom of contract issue. And, and for us, this is about empowering these students that have built so many of these programs. These are billions upon billions of dollars of revenue that's been generated. And so ever since uh, NCAA versus Alston, the Supreme Court's indicated that the NCAA is really running afoul uh, of our antitrust laws in the United States. And so we view ourselves as attorney generals as the people's protector. That means also protecting our student athletes and it's about empowering them. And so we're very, very uh, grateful for the preliminary injunction. I know a lot of Tennessee fans, a lot of college sports fans were on the edge of their seat uh, ever since the hearing to try to get this ruling and, and try to know when it was going to happen. And we heard a lot of different windows of time where this ruling could come down. A.G. Scrimetti, I'll start with you on this one. When you put forth the effort you do and you're putting yourself out there and the state of Tennessee out there in a, in a lawsuit like this, and you're trying to get something done, uh, is the, as, as Tom Petty would say, is the waiting the hardest part in the end when you're having to wait back on a ruling? How do you handle that time in between where you've put, out, you put forth your effort in the hearing and then waiting on the decision? Well, the waiting is the hardest part, but here, if the judge wanted to stick with the, the TRO decision not to enjoin the rules, he could have done that very quickly. So my thinking was the longer this goes, the better our chances. Uh, I, you know, the guy who argued this, Cam Norris, has argued two cases in the U.S. Supreme Court. He said he has never been as nervous as he was in this because he's been a Vols fan since he was a kid. Uh, you know, we, we put our all into this. I'm so grateful for General Miara's and Virginia partnering on this. Uh, it meant a lot to everybody. And, you know, the waiting was worth it. We got a great result here. And General Miars, I'll ask the same question to you. What what was it like the time in between the hearing to now where, where you get this outcome that you desired all throughout? Well, listen, we were confident, but as as General Smitty would say, uh, you can go in the court and say the sky is blue and there's a 50% chance the judge won't agree with you. So 
Uh, the waiting is the hard part, but we're, we're glad at this moment to really start empowering our student athletes uh, again. I remember talking to a, a former ACC quarterback who told me he calculated the cost of his tuition versus all the hours he put in the weight room, in the film room, traveling to and from game day, practices and game day, and he divided it. And he said it was the, the, the value was less than half of minimum wage of the number of hours. And so, you know, these student athletes, so many of them will never be able to uh, be able to play professionally. And so they have this small window of time where they're able to possibly be rewarded. And we're, we're grateful for the fact that we have these NILs, but we're even more grateful that now with this preliminary injunction, these students can actually make informed decisions about what's the best place for them to continue their academic and athletic career. So uh, I applaud General Scametti. He first obviously came to me with this idea. He's been aware of my frustrations with the NCAA, and uh, I was really honored to be asked and honored to partner with him to help protect our student athletes. And General Scrimetti, what is the next possible course of action for, for the NCAA in this case? What, what, is, what is the expectation right now on your side of how they're going to handle this ruling moving forward? Well, they've got a few options here. They could appeal it, and it could go up to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, they could try to move forward with the case and, and get to a final judgment from the court sooner rather than later. Or they could look at retooling the system that has not worked. It's been broken. It's been unfair. Um, it needs a change. It, the end of this is not this case. This is the beginning of whatever the new order in college sports is. But there had to be a fresh start. What we had wasn't working, uh, and this is this is what it took to start the ball rolling in the next direction. So, you know, we're happy to talk with them if they want to start talking about ways to resolve this in the short run or the long run. Uh, we're happy to keep litigating if that's what it takes. We like our chances, but whatever happens, we are going to continue fighting to make sure that student athletes have fair and clear rules that are going to let them enjoy the benefits of the sports that that bring so much joy to everybody. And General Miares, um, when you look at the possibilities now out in front of college sports, college football, the NCAA, whatever the legislating governing body is going to be moving forward, you know, we in sports talk or that talk about sports for a living, we're constantly throwing out, you know, Nick Saban, former college coaches, conference commissioners. There needs to be a player representative and an element. All these people need to be at the table to figure out what's next and how sports are going to be run in college. Do you think a, an attorney general or former attorney general maybe should be a part of those conversations also to have the legal background given now your influence in this and what's gone on with the NCAA in this case? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, through our lawsuit, we're going to have a seat at the table if we have some type of um, uh, negotiation on this. And we're open to that. But really, all of this is about is finally, just recently, we've seen empowering these student athletes, empowering these athletes uh, that have done so much to build college athletics to now, after the NFL, it's the most popular sports, uh, college football in particular, in the country and think about it, for years and years, if a student athlete receives so much as a $200 plane ticket so mom and dad could fly out to see them play, they would be considered an impermissible benefit. But they could walk into the bookstore and see a jersey uh, with their name on it being sold for $100. Uh, that was how distorted for years it was with the NCAA. So the NILs are the first step of what I hope is this new structure that comes forward that empowers these athletes that have generated untold billions of dollars over the decades and many of them never get to play professionally i have two senior members of my uh office in the virginia attorney general's office that both played college football they're both in their 40s now uh, they never played professionally but both their knees and their back and their shoulder problems are profound and it has left a huge impression on me on the on the price your body pays particularly if you're in football and the fact that you're not compensated for decades you weren't. So what these NIL does is it helps level the playing field and empowers the students. And it seems for so long, that seems to be the thing the NCAA did not want to do. It did not want to empower students. And we're, we're, we're proud to be able to be on the side of empowering these students, uh, these student athletes during this period. And we know the NCAA has been in a vulnerable position for, for quite some time, but because of what, 
you two gentlemen and your offices have accomplished here, I don't know they've ever been weaker or more vulnerable right now. And there's a lot of people asking for reform and for change in college athletics. We've had Senator Tommy Tuberville on this show. The NCAA is coming to Congress and saying, hey, pass bills, pass laws. It's going to help us govern college sports. And he's coming on our show and saying, well, you figure out your house. You figure out how to govern it. You figure out what to do. I'll ask both of you guys right now, because you're such a big part of it, if asked about a solution for college sports, would you want to be part of the change? Would you want to be to take that action, to be a part of whatever's next and offer your opinion and your two cents about how to make this work legally and how to make it fair for everyone involved? Absolutely. I mean, we, we did this to look out for the interests of student athletes and their interests aren't going to suddenly go away. Whatever happens, whatever changes happen, the same forces that got us into the bad spot we've been in are going to still be there. Uh, we need to make sure that the students at the heart of college sports, without them, there would be nothing to talk about. We need to make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah, I would echo that. I hope to be part of the discussion and part of the solution as we enter this new era of empowering these student athletes moving forward and making sure that they are they're properly rewarded for what they bring to the schools. I mean, we live in a pretty divided country, but one thing we recognize is sports has this amazing ability of bringing us together and uniting people. And uh, these student athletes are people that uh, that really represent their universities, their entire state. In some cases, they should be able to be rewarded. So we have, we look forward to be parting of that discussion. Uh, and you know, I'd like to note that you know, so often some of the big changes we've seen right now across the country are from our state attorneys general. That uh, it seems like sometimes you know, this the U.S. Senate has for years been able to tackle certain issues like big tech and the NCAA. They just haven't been able to get it done. So we're we're really proud of the fact that we can get some like-minded folks together to get some change and even to get these discussions like we're having now. And so. Uh, we're proud to be able to be, uh, uh, you know, people of action that we can get this conversation moving. And we're really grateful for the ruling today. The Attorney General for the state of Tennessee, Jonathan Scrimetti, and the Attorney General for the state of Virginia, Jason Miares, have been our guests. Gentlemen, congratulations on the result today. And please come back on the show when you're at the table fixing college sports moving forward. We'd love to have you as a guest anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you. Honor.